Hey, it's Neil Parfit here. Happy Valentine's Day. Of course, I'm spending the day doing technical loser stuff, and here we are. So this is sort of the last technical piece of the puzzle, and I'm just setting it up now. And this, with the plastic still on the front, is an Avid Matrix. When you're trying to figure out what audio interface to get for your computer, usually it just has to do with the number of inputs and outputs you need to your system. Um, if it's non-Avid gear, a lot of sound card offerings are, you know, two input, two output. It might be eight in, eight out, plus some digital, or it might be 64 in, 64 out digital. There's all sorts of combination of these things. And most of the time, it's not exactly what you want, so you have to make a compromise. The interesting thing about the Avid Matrix is that it's sort of a blank palette and you buy the type of I.O. you need a la carte. And then within its matrix router, and I guess that's why they call it the matrix, you sort of patch all the I.O. to where it has to go and how it talks to Pro Tools and you're done. So with this, this is a limiting almost eight U of gear down to two. So the stock configuration of the matrix is 64 channels in and out to Pro Tools HDX, and that's via these two digital link connectors here. Uh, besides that, we have 64 channels of MADI in and out on coax, and then we have 16 channels of AES on DB25s. So the idea is you can patch anything going to and from Pro Tools to the MADI or AES or any combination of within their matrix patch software. So just having this AES format conversion on here eliminates a piece of outboard gear for me because it does it all within the box. But what makes this thing really interesting is the fact that all the I.O. is a la carte. So by default, it comes blank with these empty cages and I can buy the I.O. I need and pop in the cards and I'm up and running with the exact I.O. I need. This is the Digilink expander card. This allows another 64 channels into Pro Tools HDX. So next we have an eight channel digital audio converter. This is eight channels on DB25. And two of these will feed my 16 channel summer. And I have a third set of eight here that will feed my 5.1 as well as a stereo fold. This little thing here is 128 channels of MADI in and out on an expansion card. And these convert it to micro SC or whatever that little micro fiber cable is called. So any of you out there who have the Avid HD racks know how noisy the MADI and some of those racks can get. This thing is on and it is silent. I can't begin to tell you how excited I am not having those stupid little 1U fans making noise. This is awesome. Well, that's significantly quieter. So you can see that a lot of this is empty. Um, it's pretty much a big back plane that connects to a brain. And then what is interesting is that it does have dual power supplies, which is unusual on a lot of audio equipment. So this thing is designed for broadcast and critical use because if a power supply fails, the other one will still work and keep the system running. Otherwise, there's not much in here. I mean, there's no way this thing costs six grand to manufacture, but again, that initial base model money is going into the R&D on this thing. So I decided to get the internal Matty IO daughter board, and this thing allows you to have an additional 128 channels in and out via micro SC or whatever that little fiber cable is called. And with this, it allows you to put it right here and it leaves all eight bays free. And this is about $2,000 cheaper than the card that goes here and it's identical in operation. So that's insane, so I decided to get this. The only problem is this isn't an easy pop off the plate and pop this in. Apparently, I have to take off 14 screws. It's a good thing I didn't pet my cat today because that's a lot of static that could fry all this stuff. So I've taken out the 14 mount screws of various types holding these connectors in place. Honestly, I still can't believe I have to do this as an end user. Next, I'm supposed to remove four screws. Then you're supposed to gently push on the AES connector and the motherboard's supposed to pop out of its socket connector thingy. But I was doing that and it wasn't working. And it turns out there aren't four screws to uh, take out. There is five. There is a mistake in the manual. Thanks, Avid. That was uh, kind of scary. But yeah, so as a user, I'm supposed to unplug this entire main board, which is pretty much the uh, megabucks of this device, 
I feel like I'm breaking the warranty, but apparently I'm not. And this is all just to plug in a card that goes right here. This is ridiculous. All right, well, I got the Matty IO board installed. Uh, a few little things. The uh, screw hole below it on the main board, I can't get to, to put a screw there. And it also didn't come with any sort of standoff. So that's kind of dumb. I guess the idea is when you secure it to the rear plate, that prevents any stress and wiggle. But why didn't they just include a little standoff there? Also, this screw here is blocked by the power cable. So I had to sort of carefully put that in on angle, which is kind of scary because again, this is the brain of this whole device. And I had to take the motherboard completely off to put this expander in. Why didn't this come stock? Like this. Okay, so that is finished and I never want to have to do that again. Thank you, Avid. Jesus. Thankfully, putting cards in is a lot easier and this is all the user should have to be responsible for installing. All you have to do is just align the card in the bay, make sure the bottom is lined up with those little guides you can see the little data connectors there. And then all you have to do is just sort of pull it forward and it just clunks in. And at that point, you just secure it by the back plate with those two screws and you're done. That was a lot easier than this gong show back here. All right, so I have my four cards installed. I've put my DAs off to the side here and my other Digilink card here. And I'm gonna put one more here when I have the money to buy one more. And that will give me my 192 channels to and from Pro Tools HDX. And I chose to put them over here versus over here just because my cable harness for all these connectors are in one clump. So it's just more of a physical thing, keeping them closer together. And then all my analog stuff is over on the other side. So there we go, that's the Avid Matrix hardware setup. I'm gonna bring this over to the studio now, get it all rigged up, and hopefully it's smooth sailing from there. That's right, Googie. What do you think? Okay, maybe it won't be smooth sailing. I'm sensing some hesitation. Goog!